Well, it's a beautiful day outside and I hope the breeze, though, won't cause too much of a problem for the audio. But, you know, I've been hearing a lot of different places talk about pandemic garden or it's time to start a garden if you never have been before. Think of Peak Posterity seeing it, uh, the Provident Prepper saying it. Everybody is saying this is the year to have a garden. And it made me think of, I got this book recently, The Wartime Kitchen and Garden. And you know, it's talking about the Victory Gardens. And I'll let you know when I get done, but I just started reading it. But it made me think right now, that's kind of what's happening, right? Go out in your backyard and start a garden. Well, you know, for everybody that may not be feasible, and I want to talk a little bit about some of the things you need to think of before you start digging up your front lawn. <laughs> One thing they say is start a garden this summer. Well, what's the purpose of it? Is it just to have the pleasure of having garden and having some fresh veggies? Or are you worried that there will be certain shortages? If you are, you might want to think of, hmm, well, last year they had problems with potatoes, so I'm just gonna have a potato garden this summer so I can have enough potatoes to feed my family all year long. You know, think about what might be a shortage and then plant that if that is what your family likes. Otherwise, a lot of what us gardeners are doing is that we are planting things because we think it tastes better fresh and we're eating it on the spot. And if we do have an excess, then we might freeze it or can it or dehydrate it for the winter months. But think of what the purpose of your garden is. Now, if the purpose is that you want to feed your whole family um, fresh vegetables all year long from what you grow in your garden, then you need to think about something like this book, which is mini farming on a quarter of an acre. And this is by Brett Markham. Okay. Most of us cannot do that, and we couldn't even do it in a quarter of an acre. They usually say that for a family of four, you need at least two acres to really produce what you need for your family, especially if you're growing your own wheat. But I just wanted to go over some of the basics of gardening, what you should think about. To me, before you ever put your shovel in the soil, do some planning. That way you can foresee any problems, take care of them now, and have a successful garden. Because you know what? If everything fails, you probably aren't going to garden again. Now, if you're having problems finding seeds, uh, Burpee said they have like a 10 day delay, but they will get seeds out to you. Uh, I know I saw seeds at the local tractor supply. I don't know um, they're selling them. I don't think they're supposed to. And I've seen some of them in actual grocery stores. So you probably can find seeds, but I think nurseries will be open. So if you want to start more with plants like nice patio tomato plants or pepper plants or something like that, I'm thinking that will be available mid-May. You know, if you're in a small apartment, that might not be something. You might not be able to have a garden but you may be able to at least get some fresh like bean sprouts or something like that. And here's a video I think to check out if you are an interested in sprouting your own seed. I think she does a fantastic job. And also I noticed a lot of places are sold out on seeds, but Michigan Gardener, I still, when I checked, had his, I think it's 10 different packets of seeds anyway, available for sprouting. I think it's for 10 bucks. So definitely something to check out if you're interested. Now, maybe you can't have your own garden, but you know what? You can share somebody else's and those are called CSAs, Community Supported Agriculture. And my youngest son and I did that when we lived at our other house. We lived in near the woods and it was just shade everywhere. We really couldn't have a vegetable garden. So we joined a CSA 
and part of the fee was volunteer. You had to work so many hours doing whatever they told you, be it weeding or whatever. And then you paid a certain amount for your share. And then during the production months, uh, you could go every week and pick up a packet of whatever was fresh off the vine or pulled out of the ground. So that's really a great way too to be able to get fresh vegetables if you're not able to grow your own. And in some communities, they have shared garden space, you know, plots that the city makes available to people. So you want to check that out too. That might be a viable solution. Now, maybe you're lucky and have a pretty big patio or deck. You might want to get into some container gardening. And I know, like, here's a book and it's called Incredible Vegetables from Self-Watering Containers and it's by Edward C. Smith and I think you might want to check it out if you are interested in growing veggies and fruits on your patio or your deck or if you live in a very arid environment where water is precious this might be the way to go and there are also a lot of online resources for container garden or bucket gardening you know self-watering buckets so you want to check out some of those too. Okay, let's say you got the space, right? It's in your backyard. Right now though, kind of full of grass. Maybe even more crabgrass than grass. So you're gonna to have to dig it up. Well, you also have to decide what type of gardening system are you using? And you know what? There are so many nowadays. Um, and that can really confuse you. You know, you could just, right, get rid of the grass, break up the soil, put some seeds in. And you know what? You would get some harvest, but probably not the maximum harvest. So there's all different types from, I can never pronounce it, hugel something or another, which is kind of mound gardening. There's intensive gardening, like the biointensive or the French intensive method. There is the keyhole garden. Um, you can go on and on and on. And of course, what I do is a modified, which supposedly if you modify it, it's not even it, but the Mel Bar Bartholomew square foot gardening. And this is his book. This type of gardening appeals if you have kind of more of an engineering mind, which I think I do, um, and you like to have kind of precise plots where everything goes and directions. So you might want to check out this book. Um, this is especially good if you're doing raised beds, uh, which to me is the way to go. Now, no matter where you live, you need to know what grows in your zone. You know, I happen to be in zone 5B, but you might be in zone 7, and it's completely different when you plant something, what you do. So get something for your state. This is my month by month gardening in Michigan, and it's by Fitzel. Comes in handy for me. But there are all things you should think about before you start digging up that lawn to make your garden plot. One thing is you don't want where you're going to garden to be too far from a water source because chances are Mother Nature is not going to provide enough. So think about how far you are from a water source, how long a hose you will need. Something else very important, like I stated before, where we lived before was just too shady. I mean, we grew great hostas, but we couldn't grow much vegetables. So you want to locate your garden in an area that has between six and eight hours a day of sunlight and you know what if you're looking at it at a certain time of year like you might think spring oh I get plenty of sunlight in this area but then once the trees get all their leaves you might realize ooh, not as much as I thought so make sure you have a plot where you get a lot of natural sunlight now one thing you have to worry depending on where you're living I know where I live is you can go through all this work, have this beautiful garden, and boy, it ends up being a smorgasbord for all the local critters. You know, we learned the hard way, hard way that deer seem to like our veggies, so we had to put up a six-foot deer fence around. 
Well, then we learned that that wasn't enough. The rabbits were still getting in, so we put up chicken wire lower all the way around. Well, guess what? We learned that woodchucks can go underground and come back up in the garden area. So, we ended up redoing the garden plot and putting in hardware cloth over the entire surface and then putting in the soil and then putting on our raised beds and then putting in pavers in between. And that has worked pretty good, but we always have to check for holes in the fence because animals do get in. And the one thing I still don't have protection from is birds. And when I'm first uh, having my blueberries, whatever, they get them first and my strawberries before I seem to get the netting on them. But you need to think about wildlife because you'll get very disappointing if you're doing gardening and it's just about time to pick your produce you're so proud and you come out next morning and everything is half chewed and off the vine whatever because some critter got in your garden so plan ahead of time so that doesn't happen wow the uh, wind is picking up and the clouds are coming in so I'll have sunlight and then not so much the other thing is you have to consider is the appearance of your garden. Some neighborhoods have strict zoning laws on what you can do. You know, you might not be able to put a veggie garden in your front lawn. But there are many resources that tell you how to combine your vegetable and fruit plantings with your regular landscaping and to make it attractive. So that might be something you want to check out. Now the sun comes out, goes away, comes out. Anyway, one thing you also want to think about if you are doing this seriously for your family sustenance is how to prolong your harvest. And if you live in the cold areas um, like Michigan or out in Northeast, you want to think about Four Season Harvest. I think by Elliot Coleman is an excellent book. I highly recommend it. And it's all on how to extend your harvest. And he gets carrots all season long. Doesn't matter if there's six inches of snow on top. So one more thing I should say is I think it's better to start small. One of the mistakes I always make when I'm going to do something is I think big first and then the reality gets in, right? Uh, I remember when I started my first rose bed, I double dug the whole bed. Took forever, right? Well, that's the same thing with gardening. Don't start too big because your kids might be very upset because when they think of gardening all they think of is weeding and not enjoying the produce that comes out of it. So start in a manageable size. The other thing is once you pick your plot and decide what you're going to do, remember if you're using an area that has grass, unless you really dig deep and get off all the roots, that grass or weeds will find a way to come back up in your garden. So you want to make sure that you completely clear the area or use a lot, a lot of layers of cardboard. You know, maybe you're going to do a lasagna garden, but whatever. If you're planning on using that same space for years to come, it's better to do a good job starting up, which is completely get rid of the grass and weeds before you start planting your garden because you want to make it as easy as possible and nobody enjoys spending their whole weekend weeding. Well, this is all I have to say. I just am interested if some of you have never had a garden before, are you thinking about starting one this year? If so, what are you thinking about doing? Just uh, something out on your patio or actually doing raised beds? If so, what type of garden method are you using? Anyway, I always love to hear from you. Please comment below. Thank you.